Baltimore National Heritage Area really has a great footprint in southwest Baltimore. Uh, there's a number of really important historical attractions over here and uh, it's really made a difference. These grant funding programs have helped preserve um, and interpret uh, a lot of these historic attractions which otherwise would be without a good story to the American public. I'm Courtney Wilson, the Executive Director of the b and Railroad Museum here in Baltimore. The museum is 40 acres in downtown Baltimore with five monumental buildings. We hold the oldest, most historic, and most comprehensive American railroad collection in the world. President's Day weekend and Baltimore was slated to get a major, major snowstorm. I don't think anybody really anticipated that the snowstorm would reach almost 30 inches, but it did. And uh, I guess it was that Sunday night before the Monday holiday, which would have been the 16th of February. I got a call about 11.30 in the evening uh, because all the alarms were going off. Uh, my director of facilities made his way, amazingly, through the snow down here and discovered that a couple of panels of the roof had collapsed under the weight of the snow. Well, I spent the night here at the museum. I came, thankfully, out a four-wheel drive vehicle, came down and spent the evening here, outside, of course, not in the building. Um, left to go home and freshen up in the morning, came back, and when I came back, half of the entire roof had collapsed. Um, it was just a horrific sight of kind of damage to the collection inside the building as well as to the building itself. Out of all the locomotives that were damaged in the roof collapse, the J.C. Davis took the hardest and most disastrous hit. Uh, literally, parts were broken off and spread all over the roundhouse that next morning. The wooden cab was crushed. The locomotive tender was bent and twisted. Really, the, the worst shape. And it took a little extra money and a lot of extra sweat and tears to get it done, but it represents the height of Victorian locomotive design. And as you look across it, the painting and the decoration is, is just absolutely gorgeous. As opposed to the Cromwell, which goes back to that big kind of dark industrial machine. So you see a real generational difference here in locomotive design. And the two of them represent two distinctive periods uh, in American history. But uh, the staff here in the restoration shop did a magnificent job and it's a real short piece today. At the end of the day, it was $30 million in damage to both the building and the collection. Uh, but if you can imagine, I mean, this roof sits pretty high, and the panels that fell were probably about 75, 80 feet up in the air. So you have snow and slate and steel and wood all crashing that distance down upon these historic locomotives and other exhibits, even small objects that were in the museum at the time. Of course, we're looking for grant funding all over the place to restore all these locomotives that were damaged. Uh, this particular one, we, we asked uh, the Baltimore National Heritage Area for funding, and back in those days, the Heritage Area's grant funding program was relatively new. Uh, but it just made sense for the museum because we're a part of the heritage area, the heritage area is part of us, the locomotive is important to Baltimore, the museum is important to Baltimore, and so the connection between the heritage area and the museum I think was really kind of sealed with this grant. But you know, the heritage area not only funds the restoration of collections, but also exhibits so that the heritage area helps us to tell stories to the American public and it helps preserve our buildings as well. The heritage area programs and, and the funding programs, grant programs, have been amazing. We wouldn't be where we are today, really, without the help.